Hello friends, it's Kayla and it's time again to give you some book news to talk about books that I have added to my Goodreads in the last two months that I don't know anything about. I just added them because the author intrigued me, I've read from them before, the cover intrigued me, and now we read the synopsis for the first time together and decide if we want to read the book. I've done this 11 billion times and it never gets old. I love it. And I love getting your feedback on like what covers you like, what synopsis intrigues you. With the exception of a few, all of these are 2025 releases, which is just like crazy because we're at that point in the year where there's nothing new being announced because I don't want to alarm you, but there are only four and a half months left in 2024. First up, Camilla Bruce. I have never read anything from this author, but I've had things of hers on my radar. So this cover I like, it says, a murderess becomes the guardian of two very unusual girls in this mesmerizing gothic novel. Clara Woods is a killer. Oh God, and perfectly fine with it too. So what if she takes a couple of lives to make her own a little bit better? At the bottom of her garden is a flower bed long overgrown where her late husband rests in peace, or so she always thought. Then the girls arrive. Lily and Violet are her nieces recently orphaned after their affluent parents died on an ill-fated anniversary trip. In accordance with the, oh my God, Anna and Elsa. Um, the children are to go to their closest relative, which is Clara. Clara has no interest in children. Same girl. No, I'm just kidding. The problem is Violet can see the dead man at the bottom of the garden. She can see all of Clara's ghosts and call them back into existence. Yep. Yep. I don't know about you. That sounds like it's for me. Then I have The Manor of Dreams by Christina Lee, which says it's a mix of Mexican Gothic and everything I never told you which I could be into. It's a haunting novel about the secrets that lie in wait in the crumbling mansion of a former Hollywood starlet. Okay. And the intertwined fates of the two Chinese American families fighting to inherit it. Okay. Like an inheritance story, don't love a fame story. So Vivian Yin is dead, the first Chinese actress to win an Oscar. The trailblazing ingenue rose to fame in the 80s only to disappear from the spotlight at the height of her career. Now her remaining family members are gathered for the reading of her will and her daughters expect to inherit their childhood Vivian's, inherit their childhood Vivian's grand sprawling California garden estate. I don't know if that made sense. But due to a last minute change to the will, the house is passed on to another family instead, one that has suddenly returned after decades of estrangement. In hopes of staking their claim, both families move into the mansion. It examines the true cost of the American dream. I'm intrigued. I added City of Others by Jared Poon. This is in the sunny city sunny city of Singapore. The government takes care of everything, even the weird stuff. Benjamin Toe is a middle manager in the Department for Engagement of Unusual Stakeholders, tasked with taking care of the supernatural occurrences and people no one else wants to deal with, from restless ghosts to immortal gods to conniving gin. I'm intrigued. Overworked and under-resourced, he has to juggle the demands of senior management, an elderly father, and a new boyfriend, all while trying to keep his team out of trouble. Click, want to read, then The Love Variations by Victoria Lee. This has no information on Goodreads. There is already a cover and everything. This says it's an emotional and empowering romance novel about two musicians healing their wounds and finding love, all while competing, buzzword for me, to win a prestigious piano competition in this steamy romance. Okay, I wanna read it. Then there's this one that has a very cute cover. It reminds me a little bit of Emily Wilde. It's called Homegrown Magic, and it's written by two authors. Jamie Pacton and Rebecca Potus. A delightfully queer romantic fantasy full... Wait, okay, I saw the word YA and I got concerned. It says they're two acclaimed YA authors making their debut in the adult space. It's a romantic fantasy full of friends to lovers chemistry, found family, rival family drama, and cozy garden magic. Doesn't that sound like what we all need? <laughs> Yale is the only scion of... of of an obscenely wealthy banking family with its fingers in every pie in the realm. They're on the precipice of a predetermined life when they flee their own graduation party, galloping away in search of, well, they're not sure, but maybe the chance to feel like life can still be a grand adventure. Then Margot, talented plant witch, tea lover, and greenhouse owner has never felt further from adventure in her life. She's been desperately trying to keep what remains of her family's magical remedy business afloat. So when her childhood friend and former crush Yale rides back into her life, she's shocked. But now they're gonna fall in love. Very cutesy, very demure. Then we have a new Julia Bartz. So excited because the writing retreat was one of my favorite thrillers. I know not a lot of the book club read it, so I guess this probably won't be likely to be a recurring author for the Literally Dead book club, but I, 
I wish I felt confident in that because I love the cover. But first we need to find out what it's about. When a catatonic, oh, it's called The Last Session. Did I say that? When a catatonic woman shows up at the psychiatric unit, social worker Thea swears she knows her from somewhere. She's shocked to discover the patient holds a link to a traumatic time in her past. Upon regaining lucidity, the patient claims she can't remember the horrific recent events that caused her brain to shut down. Thea's at a loss, especially when the patient is ripped away from her as suddenly as she appeared. Determined to find her, Thea follows a trail of clues to a remote center in southwestern New Mexico where a charismatic couple holds a controversial monthly retreat to uncover attendees' romantic and sexual issues. Forced to participate in increasingly intimate exercises, Thea finds herself inching closer not only to her missing patient, but also to tantalizing answers about her harrowing past. However, time is running out and she stays for the last session. If she stays for the last session, she might too lose her mind or worse. Okay, this sounds like, I don't know, culty, um, perhaps like questionable mental health. Maybe I don't want to pick this, but I do want to read it. I will be reading it for myself. Okay, Amanda LaDuke has a novel coming out, which I am worried about because I did not like, in fact, strongly did not like her last thing, The Centaur's Wife, but I liked her nonfiction. So I think I'll pick this up just to see, just to see how she's changed as an author. Um, this says, it's called Wildlife. It follows two walking, talking hyenas as they interact with humans over decades. No. I changed my mind. I will not be reading it. Maybe you would be into it. I don't like animals as main characters. Very few times have I enjoyed that. And with an author that's already questionable for me, probably not the best idea. It's set in Scotland. We have a man banished by his father for seeing the divine in the animals around him. And he finds a religion based on his belief that God granted speech to the hyenas as part of a divine plan to heal and exalt the human race. Next up, we have We Could Be Rats by Emily R. Austin. And I feel as though people might prefer this cover. I hate it, but it is very cutesy. So I, f I get the sense that it could appeal to many. I like this one, which is the more simple structured design choice. This is called We Could Be Rats. Did I say that? It says a moving story about two very different sisters and a love letter to childhood. That's cute. Sigrid hates working at the Dollar Pal, but having always resisted the idea of growing up into the trappings of adulthood, she did not graduate high school, preferring to roam the streets of her small town with her best friend. Her older sister, Margaret, is baffled and frustrated by her sister's inability to conform to the expectations of polite society. What unfolds is an unforgettable story of two sisters finding their way back to each other and a celebration of the transcendent, unshakable bond. Ashley Herring Blank has another queer romance coming out next year. It's called Dream On Ramona Riley. And this says a small town waitress and a Hollywood star's world collide in this new romance. Okay. Once upon a time, Ramona Riley was a student at a prestigious art school with dreams of landing in Hollywood as a costume designer to the stars. Then Dylan has always lived an unconventional life, having famous rock icons for parents, but she wants to prove that she's not some chaotic, talentless Nepo baby, that she actually has skills, that she's just a normal person. I guess these two knew each other in childhood and then they come back together and they fall in love. I don't think I will be reading that one. It just takes a lot for me to pick up a romance to be convinced of one, but I hope you will all love it. Next, I saw one by Aisha Saeed. I wanna say this is her adult debut. It's called The Matchmaker. And it says, it's a magical mix of romance, family saga, detective story, and teeth chattering suspense. Oh, that was someone's review. Okay, here's the synopsis. We have a main character named Nura a highly sought after social matchmaker who seems to have it all until she's blindsided by a cascading change of chain of suspicious and increasingly terrifying events. While it's not uncommon to get the occasional hate mail from rejected clients, when a couple's carefully constructed wedding implodes, she realizes someone is taking things too far. Nora must embark on a dangerous cat and mouse game that threatens not only her safety, but everything she's worked so hard to build. Okay, this does not look like a romantic suspense cover to me, so that's very interesting. Um, I have read from this author before and I probably will pick this up. I am intrigued. Next on my radar is this one, 
very much the opposite of the fun stuff that we've been talking about. It's called One Day Everyone Will Have Always Been Against This by Omar L. Akkad. I saw a tweet from this person um, a while back about, it said, oh, it's in the synopsis. One day when it's safe, when there's no personal downside to calling a thing what it is, when it's too late to hold anyone accountable, everyone will have always been against this. Um, he's talking about Gaza. He's talking about genocide. He's talking about Palestine. It says uh, this book is going to chronicle the deep fracture which has occurred for black, brown, indigenous Americans as well as the upcoming generation, many of whom have clung to the thread of faith in Western ideals in the idea that their countries or the countries of their adoption actually attempted to live up to the values they espouse. This book is a reckoning with what it means to live in the West and what it means to live in a world run by a small group of countries. It will be the fire next time for a generation that understands we're undergoing a shift in the so-called rules-based order, a generation that understands the West can no longer be trusted to police and guide the world or its own cities and campuses. It draws on details of Omar's own story as an emigrant who grew up believing in the Western project, who was catapulted into journalism by the rupture of 9-11. This book is his heartsick, heartsick breakup letter with the West. It is a breakup we are watching all over the US on college campuses, on city streets, and the consequences of this rupture will be felt by all of us. His book is for all the people who want something better than what the West has served up. This is the book of our time. Next up, Augustina Basterica is getting another translation. This one originally came out in 2023 with this cover and now translated into English um, by Sarah Moses. We're getting this. The Unworthy is a work of literary horror about a woman cloistered in a secretive, violent religious order while outside the world has fallen into chaos. From her cell in a mysterious convent, a woman writes the story of her life in whatever she can find, discarded ink, dirt, and even her own blood. A lower member of the sacred sisterhood deemed an unworthy, she dreams of ascending to the ranks of the enlightened at the center of the convent and of pleasing the foreboding superior sister. Outside the world is plagued by catastrophe. Cities are submerged underwater, electricity and the internet are non-existent, and bands of survivors fight and forage in a cruel, barren landscape. Inside, the narrator is controlled, punished, but safe. But when a stranger makes her way past the convent walls, this is tagged as LGBT, joining the ranks of the unworthy, she forces the narrator to consider her long-buried past and what she might be overlooking about the enlightened. As the two women grow closer, the narrator is increasingly haunted by questions about her own past, the environmental future, and her present life inside the convent. That sounds good. Next up, sorry if you can now hear the shower in the background. Uh, Rory Power announced her new next thing. I don't know if I should read this. I believe it's why actually she doesn't say if it's tagged as YA or adult. I just know she typically writes YA and even the adult things that she's written read like YA to me. So anyway, it's called Kill Creatures and it says last summer Nan's three best friends disappear into Salt Cedar Canyon. She spent the year since grieving their loss three friends oh my god grieving their loss and avoiding questions about what happened that night now on the anniversary she's ready to say goodbye and so are the girls families who have reconvened to hold a memorial but their candlelight vigil is interrupted by the shocking return of one of the missing girls alive everyone is overjoyed except nan who was pretty sure they were dead after all she's the one who killed them <gasps> oh i want to see the cover i want to see it now i want to read it Okay, there is a sequel to How to Become the Dark Lord and Die Trying. I saw this one on Instagram. There's no Goodreads page for it yet, but it's called Everybody Wants to Rule the World Except Me, which is just very fun. It says Groundhog Day meets Deadpool in Django Wexler's raunchy, hilarious, blood splattered fantasy tale about a young woman who tired of defending humanity from the Dark Lord decides to become the Dark Lord herself. That's the original. Okay, all the information on Orbit's page is about the original story, so maybe there's not a synopsis shared for this one, but also maybe it shouldn't be shared because it'll spoil what happened in the first book. More people need to pick this up. I had a great time with it. Then we have Stag Dance, a brand new novel from Tori Peters. This says, in this collection, wait, what? It's called Stag Dance, a novel and stories, rather. It's a collection of one novel and three novellas. 
but it only comes in at 304 pages. So that's, I feel like those are all novellas. In the titular title, a Paul Bunyan type lumberjack working in illegal winter logging outfits recounts how the lonely woodsmen entertain themselves by a dance at which some of the loggers must volunteer to attend as women. Obsession, repressed desires, and betrayal lead up to the big night. Okay, and then in three equally visionary novel novellas surround Stag, Infect Your Friends and Loved Ones imagines a sci-fi future in which everyone must choose their own gender. The Chaser, a secret romance between roommates at a boarding school. And The Masker, a party weekend on the Vegas Strip turns horrific when a young cross-dresser must choose between two handsome mystery men. Okay, so this says it pushes the trans genre to its limits to explore who gets included and excluded from the possibilities of gender. I think the cover is very intriguing. Then there's another similar creature on this cover, Cold Snap by Lindy Ryan. I hate this cover. I really, really, really don't like it. But I will read to you what it's about. A grieving mother and son hope to survive Christmas in a remote mountain cabin in this chilling novella. Oh, okay. It's a novella. Two weeks ago, Christine Sinclair's husband slipped off the roof while hanging Christmas lights and fell to his death on their front lawn. Desperate to escape her guilt and grief, Christine packs up her 15-year-old son and the family cat and flees to the cabin they reserved deep in the remote Pennsylvania wilds to wait out the holidays. It isn't long before Christine begins to hear strange noises coming from the forest. This is horror, by the way. When she spots a horned figure watching from beneath between frozen branches, Christine assumes it's just a forest animal, a moose maybe, since the property manager warned her about them, said they'd stomp a body so deep in the snow nobody would find it until spring. But moose don't walk upright like a shadowy figure does. They don't call Christine's name with her dead husband's voice. Oh no! Can't wait to see what happens with that one. Then there's another animal creature on this cover. Obviously I will read anything Stephen Graham Jones comes out with. This is called The Buffalo Hunter Hunter, a chilling historical horror novel set in the American West in 1912 following a Lutheran priest who transcribes the life of a vampire who haunts the fields of the Blackfeet Reservation looking for justice. Yep, I'll be reading it. 400 pages, I'll be reading it. This one, I'm so devastated. I talked to you about the synopsis of this, like probably four episodes ago and in the last episode the cover got revealed and I completely forgot to tell you about it. Um, it's Witchcraft for Wayward Girls which sneak peek sneak the information for anybody who's a part of the Literally Dead Book Club who watches all of my videos. Thank you so much. This will absolutely be the first pick of 2025. It comes out in January. It's like 500 pages. I've never done a Grady Hendrix for the book club and this is gonna be our first time. I think I forgot to show you the cover, which I'm obsessed with, because I was actually working on the cover design in one of those like predicting the book cover videos, and then it just didn't turn out the way that I wanted, so I never posted it, but I had hands on the cover. Mine was very much inspired by the death of Jane Lawrence, and it had like two hands, and there was like some, supposed to be something in the middle, I didn't know what. I had put like a, oh my God, whatever this is called. That's what I had on it. This is like a lava lamp with a hand in it, and I love it, but there's also a secondary cover. Let me know which one you prefer. I think this is just, oh, this one's so good. It's witchy. I'll talk to you more about it later, I'm sure, and I've read you the synopsis before. This cover, for some reason, is really doing it for me. This is a long one, 500 pages. Why do we need a 500 page mystery? It's called This Book Will Bury Me. Love the cover. I love it so much. It's by Ashley Winstead, so obviously I'll be reading it. Could it possibly be a book club pick? maybe but there's no synopsis on goodreads so one second it's also not on her instagram so maybe the cover wasn't supposed to be revealed it's on goodreads don't blame me blame the publisher but i don't know what it's about so you'll have to find that out yourself so there's still a reason to go follow her and the publisher and do all of that i didn't take away i didn't take away anything from anyone i promised Immortal by Sulin Tan. I talked to you about the synopsis. It got a cover. Obviously, it's beautiful. It looks very similar to her other stuff, and therefore, I love it. Uh, Deep End by Ali Hazelwood was announced. Not sure why I put this on my radar, because I'm not an Ali Hazelwood girl, but she's just such like a fun author to follow, and what did she say? She wanted to originally title this Wet. W-H-E-T. It says a competitive diver and an ace swimmer jump into forbidden waters in the steamy college romance. 
That sounds fun because I like competition, like I like sports stuff. Scarlett Vandermeer swimming upstream, a junior at Stanford and a student athlete who specializes in platform diving. Swim captain, world champion, all around aquatics golden boy, Luke Blomquist thrives on discipline. It's how he wins gold medals. A secret of his slips out and they start an arrangement. It's supposed to be just temporary, a mutually satisfying fling. But when staying away from Lucas becomes impossible, Scarlett realizes that her heart might be treading in dangerous waters. I think maybe I'll read it. I saw this one pop up. It's a thriller by Leah Conan called The Last Room on the Left. And I wanna find out what it's about. The caretaker at an isolated mountain hotel finds herself fighting for her life and sanity in this twisty, addictive female take on The Shining. Okay. Carrie's life is in her husband. Carrie's life is in her husband has left her. Her drinking habit has officially become a problem. And though the deadline for her big book deal, the one that was supposed to change everything is looming, she can't write a word. Okay, I love an author book. When she sees an ad for a caretaker position at a revital, obviously it's about an author, it's a take on The Shining. At a revitalized roadside motel in the Catskills, she jumps at the chance. It's a perfect getaway to finish her book and start fresh. But as she hunkers down in the blizzard, she spots something through the pale arm. I swear, AI is writing these synopsis, like what is happening? As she hunkers down in a blizzard, she spots something through the, a pale arm peeking out from a heap of snow. I feel like whoever wrote this couldn't decide if they wanted to say she spotted something or she spotted a pale arm, like how much would give too much away. Trapped in the mountains and alone with the dead frozen body, Carrie must keep her head and make it out before the killer comes for her too. Yes, that sounds like it's for me. Then we have Rest Stop by Nat Cassidy. This is just a novella that's coming out in October that I really want to read because the cover has an eyeball. <laughs> and therefore I hate it, but I must read it. It says a young musician finds himself locked inside a gas station bathroom in the middle of the night by an unseen assailant caught between the horrors on the other side of the door and the horrors rapidly skittering down the walls inside. That's not going to be good for me, but I'm going to read it. Then Don't Eat the Pie by Monique Asher. This I believe is a debut. I don't know if I like the cover. I like the idea of the cover, but it's also like hyper realistic and I don't know if I'm into it. It says it's a horror. So let's dive in. Newlywed Sam has always wanted to be a part of a normal, happy, happy family. When her mother-in-law falls ill, Sam dutifully moves her family to the island to care for her. The island residents, namely the older women, welcome Sam and her daughter with open arms, endless cocktails, and plenty of superstition. It's perfect until it's not. The house next to her mother-in-law's is creepy. Not only that, but it's where Ben, I'm guessing her husband's, first wife died. Sam's teen daughter, Emma, isn't interested in spending the summer there, but then Emma starts to see things like ghosts. Sam doesn't want to rock the boat with her new family, and so they have to figure out what secrets are buried on this island. The two books that it's comps for, Hide by Kirsten White and How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix, I hate it. So um, now I'm worried, but it is officially on my radar. All right, three more and we're out of here. We have Sky Daddy. What a title. By Kate Folk. This is the author of one of my favorite anthologies ever out there. We're following a frequent flyer named Linda. To outside observation, Linda's life might seem drab. Weekdays, she earns $20 an hour moderating comments for a video sharing platform, then rides the bus home to the windowless room she rents in a garage in the outskirts of San Francisco. But on the last Friday of each month, she indulges her true, she indulges her true, is what it says. Truth, maybe? <laughs> Taking Bart? to SFO for a round trip flight to a regional hub. Linda's secret is that she's sexually attracted to their intelligent widescreens, sleek fuselages, and powerful engines that make her feel a way that no human lover ever could. She believes her destiny is to someday marry one of the suitors, one of her suitors by dying in a plane crash? A catastrophic event that would unite Linda with her soulmate plane for eternity. <sighs> She's in love with a plane. Oh my God, I've seen a lot of like human inanimate object romances, but they're all like indie public, they're like self-published, like not from a major. Okay, Linda is used to hiding her true nature, but when her coworker Karina invites her to a quarterly vision board brunch, Linda sees a chance both to get closer to her work friend and to nudge the universe on behalf of her destiny. However, as the vision boards seem to manifest items more quickly and more literally than Linda had expected, the carefully balanced elements of her life begin to spin out of control and she must choose between maintaining the trappings of normalcy or launching herself headlong towards her greatest dream. A subversive, unforgettable tale of the distances some will travel for true love. That is so unhinged. 
I must have it. Then I have The Threshing Floor by Steph Nelson. She'll do anything to save her child, even join a cult. Okay, that doesn't sound like it might be for me. But the cover's beautiful. And let's continue. When single mom Dallas learns her toddler Cash needs a heart transplant, she gets desperate. There are no guarantees he'll receive a donor heart in time. And even if he does, she can't afford the expensive procedure. Then Dallas meets Shane. He's part of a mysterious group whose leader claims to be able to heal any disease or injury. Is this a novella or a full length? novel it doesn't say. I would read it if it was a novella. Dallas is skeptical at first and the ritual she witnesses makes her uneasy but when a broken arm gets healed before her eyes she can't deny the truth and she wants the same miracle for cash. As her son's life hangs in the balance, balance Dallas must decide how far she's willing to go to save him. Oh my gosh how long is it? It doesn't help me I must find out. Uh, last one is The Sca Staircase in the Woods by Chuck Wendig. Now I did not like the most popular, like everybody loves the book of accidents. I just did not like it and I thought it was way too long. And then I DNF'd two of his other books. One of them I also thought was way too long. This one is a, a more reasonable, in my mind, for my preferences, 300 and something pages. And it sounds intriguing. A group of friends investigates the mystery of a strange staircase in the woods. Five high school friends are bonded by an oath to protect one another no matter what. Then on a camping trip in the middle of the forest, they find something, a mysterious staircase. They find something, a mysterious... All of these are missing words, punctuation, a missing staircase to nowhere. One friend walks up and never comes back down. Then the staircase disappears. 20 years later, the staircase has reappeared. Now the group returns to find the lost boy and what lies beyond the staircase in the woods. Simple synopsis vague situation but very intriguing should this be a literally dead book club pick should i pick an author that i don't like just to explore his latest thing that i feel like i could like sound off in the comments below and that is it for me my friends today everything that i've added to my goodreads in the last two months since i talked to you last things that i am intrigued by especially for 2025 that i want to read and i'm sure i will be replaying all of these for you in my most anticipated 2025 releases that'll come out at the beginning of the year i am interested in so many things which is always exciting sometimes i sit and i worry like have i read the best have all of the most exciting books like passed me by and then books come out they just keep coming out everything sounds interesting the covers are beautiful life is worth living <laughs> i will see you later bye